Lines calls DMK and the Congress is corrupt. Shakti showdown snowballs. Prime Minister Modi accuses India bloc of maligning Shakti, pays emotional tributes to Nari Shakti with a special welcome for 11 Shakti Ammas in Tamil Nadu. Congress versus left in Kerala escalates. The Congress MP Shashi Tharoor claiming the left is trying to break into its minority vote bank. Basically, his minority vote bank is being tapped into. BJP Mock says India allies at war once again. Amid speculations over her disappearance from public eye, a new video of Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, has now surfaced with her husband, Prince Williams in Windsor. Co-presented by Aapka Joy, Bharat Ka Joy, Joy E-Bike. Co-presented by Green Lamb Laminates, Kuch Mera Kuch Tumhara. Powered by MP Birla Cement Perfect Plus, Concrete Special. Co-powered by Parul University, Vadodara, Gujarat. All right, the BJP-led NDA alliance is now gearing up for the upcoming Lok Sabha polls 2024. And state by state, they've managed to forge alliances to achieve their target of 400 seats. Their call of Char So Par, it appears that the BJP cadres across India are attempting and pulling all stops possible to stitch an alliance with the local regional parties. They found a new alliance partnership in PMK of Tamil Nadu. They've also reached out to Raj Thakre in Maharashtra. But not everywhere things are hunky-dory. In fact, Pashupati Paris in Bihar, who's uh, one of their allies, key allies in Bihar, has now resigned as the union minister. On the other hand, the JDS in Karnataka is quite unhappy with the seat-sharing talks. In fact, they say that they were not even taken into the loop while discussing seats in Karnataka. The BJP has announced Karnataka's list, uh, Suomoto, without consulting with the JDS. So here's a quick look at what's transpiring at the moment. <laughs> Setting their sights on a third consecutive electoral win, the BJP is actively forming alliances, welcoming both new and former partners into the NDA. On Tuesday, the BJP finalised its alliance with the PMK in Tamil Nadu for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. <laughs> Pantali Makal Kachi, Desi Janaya Kutirin, Terende, Variginda, Terele, Oti, Mudi was either Kirat, Brother Modi, our head, Nalachi Todare, Tamil Natil, Matrangal, Nangal in the Mudiway Editor Kindro. Meanwhile, expelled AIA DMK coordinator and former Tamil Nadu Chief Minister O Paneer Selvam was seen pulling a golden chariot as a form of prayer for Prime Minister Modi's good health and victory. MNS leader Raj Thakre met Union Minister Amit Shah, hinting at a possible alliance for the Lok Sabha elections in Maharashtra. Negotiations for seat sharing are ongoing between the JDS and the BJP for the Lok Sabha elections in Karnataka. Considering this to be a national uh, election, a nation election, we are not uh, demanding high number of seats uh, because we are a regional party, we are a local party, we are content uh, about the seats. Uh, we personally want to gift Modi ji 28 out of 28 Lok Sabha constituencies victory from this NDA, BJP and JDS alliance. The BJP, the Telugu Desam Party and the Jan Sena Party have joined forces to contest the Lok Sabha and Andhra Pradesh Assembly elections together. Nitish Kumar has already rejoined the NDA from Bihar. A political manoeuvring aimed at achieving the ambitious target of 400 plus seats for the NDA. Bureau Report, India Today. 
All right, let me quickly cut across to why exactly is Raj Thakre, or is he at all important for the NDA in Maharashtra, taking you through uh, state-wise a quick look at the breakup. If you're looking at Raj Thakre, who is the latest ally that the BJP is attempting to stitch an alliance with, here's why Raj Thakre could be important in the scheme of things for the NDA in Maharashtra. As we see here, a quick look at 2009, uh, MNS had contested about 11 uh, constituencies, but unfortunately won none. Uh, in fact, uh, what we know of is that Raj Thakre, if, he, if at all that he does enter the NDA's fold, then it's also giving a tough fight to his estranged cousin, Udhav Thakre. We know that in 2014, after that, the following elections, he contested, MNS contested 10 Lok Sabha constituencies, and at that time too, failed to win any seat. And in fact, from 20, 2009 to 2014, he lost out a significant amount of his vote share as well. And then in 2019, we know that Raj Thakre did not contest elections. And as we know, this time around, the, the BJP at least is hoping that he would dent and divide the Maratha vote base. This would be uh, an attempt that the BJP and the NDA is looking at at eating up at least some parts of the Maratha vote base. At this point, a lot of it swaying towards Udav Thakre and his camp. Of course, um, for the NDA, fortunately, they also have Eknath Shinde's camp along with them. So in that sense, it's posturing and we're looking at MNS becoming a latest ally of the BJP in Maharashtra. Rithik Bhalikar, our correspondent joining us live from Mumbai, giving us more on the alliance between the MNS and the BJP. A larger NDA, uh, Mahayuti, as they call it in Maharashtra. Rithik, give us more on the benefits that the BJP would have if at all MNS comes on board. It's almost a confirmation. They're going to be announcing it shortly from now. But we know for a fact that uh, the BJP is pulling all stops to ensure all regional parties are on board. And mind you, the MNS was also approached by Sharad Pawar's camp. Supriya Sule also asked him to join the India bloc. But seems like the BJP has won the deal. Absolutely. So BJP is uh, leaving no stone unturned in Maharashtra and uh, in an effort to uh, maximize uh, uh, the most number of seats tally in Maharashtra, uh, even MNS is now being approached and uh, today we saw how MNS Chief Raj Thakre met uh, uh, Union Home Minister uh, Amit Shah in Delhi and now he is back at his home where I am right now standing. Uh, so. Uh, it is expected that uh, uh, Raj Thakre would be speaking to media today evening or maybe tomorrow and he will uh, uh, telling us his plan about uh, joining NDA Alliance. But what uh, you have rightly mentioned is that the division of Marathi votes is of major concern to BJP which they seem to be not happening in Maharashtra despite of getting CM Eknath Shinde with them and also Ajit Pawar. But now if they want to divide Marathi votes they would uh, need a brand called Thakre which of course uh, the estranged uh, cousin Raj Thakre has with him and now even Thakre would be on board with uh, NDA Mahayuti Alliance and then they will be reaching out to most of the Marathi votes especially in the urban areas like Mumbai, Nashik, Pune and MMR region where they have a clout and there is a considerable amount of vote uh, bank which MNS still fosters. So we need to see that uh, how not just in Lok Sabha elections but also in the upcoming municipal corporation elections and assembly elections MNS is going to help uh, uh, Mahayuti NDA alliance in future. All right. Well, that's uh, that's at least the belief of the NDA and the BJP that MNS, uh, despite not having significant vote share in the state of Maharashtra, will at least help them posture, at least against Udav Thakre uh, for the moment. Now, as we know, the BJP has been on an alliance stitching spree across India. Bihar is no different. And uh, I'm going to introduce our reporters here. In fact, we have Rohit Singh joining us from Bihar as well to give us more on the dynamics currently that uh, persist in Bihar, apart from that, of course, Pramod Madhav from Tamil Nadu. We also have Sagai Raj from Karnataka, where the BJP has been aggressive in stitching alliances. To start with Bihar, let me cut across to the numbers that we have. The BJP allying with a couple of parties here. Let's start with the JDU. In the 2024 Lok Sabha polls, the JDU and the BJP coming together. In fact, the JDU's seat share is 16, and the vote share is a whopping 22.2%, a significant amount, which is why we know that the 
the BJP hasn't let go of uh, Nitish Kumar and the JDU as yet. He's come back uh, to their fold. They've managed to form their... Uh, in fact, the state government also is now on in their hands. Uh, at this point, we also know that the BJP has tied up also with LJP, Chirag Paswan, where at least six uh, seats, as per their seat share, six seats has been uh, what, what was in 2019. And this time, we believe that about five is already announced to Chirag Paswan. Uh, in fact, we also know that HAM, uh, Hindustan Awam Morcha, is another party that the BJP has allied with in Bihar. And what we know is that they have no the, uh, seat share is zero, but their vote share is about 2.3%. Again, possibly could collectively help ra raise the NDA's vote share, a uh, not at least. And then you have the RLSP, which is the Rashtriya Lok Morcha Party. In, 2000, in 2019, we know that their vote share was about 3.6%. Again, their seat share was zero. But this is collectively what the BJP is looking at to ensure to pick up their numbers a tad bit. Now, let me cut across to Rohit Singh for more on that. Rohit, let's, let, let, we're looking at good numbers here for the BJP, but we're also seeing some kind of dissent. Pashupati Paris. Yeah, just this morning has tendered his resignation as a minister. He's not very happy that Chirag Paswan has been given the significant chunk and a big share, while he says injustice has been done to him. Do you believe that the allies in Bihar that the BJP has stitched an alliance with will actually help pick up the NDA's numbers from 2019? Well, Nabila, what uh, Pashupati Paras is facing today is that he's tasting his, uh, the, he's getting the taste of his own medicine, in fact. To remember two years back uh, when he had engineered a split in the Lok Jan Shakti party, that's the original party it was, and he walked away with four other MPs of uh, Chirag Paswan, leaving Chirag Paswan completely isolated, and he formed his own party, then became a minister in the Modi government. So now it seems that uh, he's getting the taste of his own medicine and uh, history being repeated. And now BJP also banking on Chirag Paswan because the kind of uh, reputation Chirag Paswan has, the vote bank Chirag Paswan has, and also the support which he has in Bihar because BJP is looking futuristically. And BJP thinks that Chirag Paswan is more bankable as far as future politics in Bihar is concerned. He's a young face, he has the Dalit vote bank around 6% with him, and he has a long uh, political future ahead of him. And that is why in these elections, when the NDA seat sharing agreement was going on, the deal was going on, all the talks uh, that was uh, underway, uh, BJP banked on uh, Chirag Paswan and left uh, Pashupati Paras out of the, uh, in fact, the seat sharing agreement. And he, Pashupati Paras uh, party, not getting anything, no seats to fight. And today he has even announced that uh, he is uh, quitting as a minister from the Narendra Modi government. However, he has not quit NDA. Now, remains to be seen that whether he will remain with the NDA or he will also uh, switch sides, look for alternatives, look for options. One of the options before him is to go to the India Alliance. That's uh, maybe talk to Lalu Prasad and Tejasvi Adav and if they can accommodate him in the Mahakat Bandhan. Or, or the second option that uh, is left with him, or the, we can say the last resort left with him, is to fight as an independent uh, from Hajipur from where Chirag Paswan is also going to contest uh, the, the upcoming Lok Sabha election. But uh, it's almost game over for uh, Pashupati Paras as far as NDA uh, is concerned. Nabila. All right, it's game over for Pashupati Paras as per NDA is concerned. Well, it seems like for the moment the BJP has enough strength, at least when it comes to Bihar. Thanks very much. But Rohit, I'd like you to stay with us. In fact, all our reporters there bringing us a quick uh, understanding on each state and their alliance partners. What do they really bring to the table? Let's cut across now to Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu, where we have uh, Pramod Madhav. But before I cut to him, let's cut across to what it looks like for the BJP in Tamil Nadu. As we know, right after the AI, DMK dropped out and ended its alliance with the BJP, it seems like the NDA has managed to clinch a deal with the PMK this time. And the PMK has significant vote share in the state of Tamil Nadu, at least seemingly. The BJP is already seeing that, uh, the fact that the PMK has some clout. They've offered 10 Lok Sabha seats to the PMK. And what we know is that the PMK has support of the Baniyar community extensively and they're quite strong in the, uh, the northern part of Tamil Nadu. In fact, 22% vote share is what the PMK party claims to have. Of course, the election commission numbers of 2019 could be slightly different, but they do claim 
that they have at least 22% vote share and largely their vote base concentrated in the northern part of Tamil Nadu. Now, as we know that the PMK and the BJP has come together uh, to form this strong alliance, uh, at least hopefully that this will pick up the BJP's numbers and vote share from what it was in 2019 to now. Pramod Madhav, uh, with more on that uh, for us. Pramod, in 2019, the AIA-DMK almost had a sweep. But the AIA-DMK was in alliance with the BJP. Uh, but now they're not. But PMK instead has come on board. Do you think this will really add to the BJP's uh, numbers? And who are the other smaller alliance partners that the BJP has managed to tie up with in Tamil Nadu? Well, Nabila, in 2019, it was AIDFK that was leading the NDA alliance in Tamil Nadu and uh, Edapadi K. Paniswamy, like the General Secretary, President General Secretary, was very clear about it that he will not allow anyone else to be the, lead, the leading party in that period. It became, it became a very big issue as well, but still, he actually went through all that. And even after that, it was DMK alliance that had a, to a complete sweep and AIDMK had one MP that also became a part of NDA. That was O. Panisalvam's son, O. P. Ravindranath, and that was a very big, uh, like, uh, like that, that particular election showed the DMK that it has become a very strong alliance party in the state of Tamil Nadu. That was entirely different to what happened in 2014 where AIDMK stood alone and it had a complete sweep. But on even that period, PMK's Anbamri Ramdas was an MP and also Pun Radhakrishnan from BJP also like was elected as an MP from Tamil Nadu. So right now what has happened is that after AIDMK has decided to quit NDA alliance, PMK, a very important of ally, an important ally of AIDMK, actually had talks, a long talk, almost for a week, with AIDMK and uh, BJP. But finally, Anbamli Ramdas and Ramdas declared that they have decided to go with NDA to make sure that the Prime Minister's regime continues for the third time. And he believes, Anbamli Ramdas says, that like the people of Tamil Nadu are completely fed up with the past 50 years of Dravidian Party's rule and they want to bring a change. And that's the reason PMK has decided to go ahead with this particular alliance. Just like you mentioned, the PMK party is a party that is based on one-year community votes and one-years actually come from 20 to 20 percent, 22 percent in the state of Tamil Nadu that they believe they can translate to votes. However, the election commission data shows that they have like five plus, five percent plus votes in the state of Tamil Nadu that they have constantly received. And this is why even though Congress party being a national party got 10 seats from DMK in a, like uh, NDA, the national party leading alliance, PMK gets 10 seats, even though they sought 12 seats as per sources, Nabila. All right. You know, Prabhupada, uh, it, it was my bad. It was the DMK that swept 2019 elections, not the AI DMK. So the DMK sweeping 2019 elections, will they actually manage uh, to repeat that this time? AIA DMK has believed that uh, allying with the BJP has somehow brought down their vote share, and that was a result uh, that they got in 2019. So this time, they've decided to cut away from the BJP and fight solo. The BJP now gaining with PMK. Let's see how far that would pick up their numbers there. Now let me cut across to Karnataka. Of course, my state as well, uh, Karnataka, BJP has allied with the JDS. And this time, the JDS has uh, almost threatened the BJP to give them at least four seats in the Lok Sabha uh, constituency. At least four constituencies this Lok Sabha elections. If not, they ask, what's the point in an alliance altogether? So not all hunky-dory, but let me tell you a quick look here as to how the JDS is going to benefit the BJP. As we know, the JDS has a strong vote base in the old Mysuru region. In fact, if I could take you through some of the constituencies, they have a sway in Bangalore Rural, in Chamrajnagar constituency, in Mysuru constituency, and in Chikbalapura constituency. These are areas that the JDS is quite strong. In 2019, the JDS had won one seat in Hassan. And this time around, the JDS, at least minimum, is asking for Hassan, Mandya and Kolar. For 2024, they're looking at at least three seats for sure. They're also looking at one more seat. But unfortunately for the JDS, just like how the BJP has announced constituencies already for PMK in Tamil Nadu, uh, for maybe Chirag Paswan uh, in Bihar, in Karnataka, so far, despite the alliance being announced weeks ahead, there's no decision on a seat-sharing pact between the BJP and the JDS, which is what, what has really irked the JDS Supremo, H.D. Uh, Kumar Swami. He's come out to almost threaten the BJP that we will show, in fact, he says that we will show you what we are worth. We have enough vote base to push your numbers up. National politics and state politics, very different. Uh, we need to alert you that you cannot disappoint us. Sagai Raj. 
Tell us more on the JDS's disappointment that despite the alliance partnership being announced weeks ahead, so far, the BJP, just like other states, have already announced the tickets uh, and the seats for other regional parties. But for JDS, not a word has come out. Absolutely. Sumalata factor is working for a BJP and it is not working in favor of a JDS. And that is one of the reasons that why the BJP has not announced the seat sharing with JDS. And if you notice that um, top leaders from GDS are quite disappointed that uh, they are not taken into confidence, whether announcing the candidates or uh, uh, organizing the rallies or any kind of campaign. They feel that they have been left out. They have not taken into cognizance. They are not taking any kind of opinion of from the JDS and they feel that if they try to do this, uh, uh, the, the, this is not going to work for both the parties. And yesterday addressing the, the, press, the press meet, uh, SD Kumaswamy has categorically said that uh, uh, JDS can help BJP in 18 constituency. And you have mentioned few constituency, Nabila, and there are more constituency which I would like to add. The One of the constituencies are Kolar and the other constituency is Bengaluru Rural. And according to SD Kumaswamy, they got good numbers of votes even in uh, uh, Kalaburgi and Bidar. So they feel that they can make difference by helping a BJP to secure all these seats. So he says that they should take JDS into confidence if they are taking any kind of decision in all these places. And they should also invite them if there is any kind of public rallies or any kind of campaign which has been done by BJP. They feel that uh, they have been left out. There is no headway for uh, this particular alliance that they have. And even when Prime Minister Narendra Modi was in Shumaga and earlier in Kalburgi, they, they, the, the JDS leaders were not invited. On the other side, the BJP claims that they have escalated the issue. Vijendra said that he has spoken to Ashley Devagoda as well as their top leaders in Delhi about this and uh, claims that this will be sought out in the near future. All right. Well, that's interesting. At this point, we know that uh, Kumar Swami is quite upset with the fact that he's not been taken into the loop uh, that BJP went ahead, announced the seats in Karnataka, Suomoto, without consulting them. So a sour, bitter JDS at this point, weeks ahead of Lok Sabha elections in Karnataka. How soon will the BJP be able to pacify the JDS? That remains to be seen. But very interesting, a larger NDA rising in most parts of the country. The southern states of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka already sealed. We are seeing that alliances are happening on the go just week, weeks ahead of elections in different parts of the country as well. But thanks very much for the monument. Ritwik, Sagai, Pramod and Rohit for joining us from your respective states. All right, meanwhile in Punjab, the BJP and Akali Dal are all set to resume a, an alliance. In fact, a talk foreign alliance is yet to come about. Uh, we believe that for now, the leaders have met, but no decision has come about yet. So will there be a re-alliance? In fact, the decision is likely after Shiromani Akali Dal's core committee meeting will take place. And we believe that meeting is underway. BJP leaders yet to confirm to India today on the talks and a decision is likely to come up, come about soon. In fact, the Akali Dal has said the issue will be discussed in a core committee meeting. That will be held on March 22nd. The Congress, meanwhile, says the alliance may spell a death knell to the SAD. The Akali Dal, which is already an alliance partner of the BJP once, it appears there's a lot of speculation right now that they may come back to the BJP's fold to form an NDA alliance in Punjab. In fact, leaders of the BJP and the Akali have already confirmed that the two parties are in talks for a possible re-alliance in Punjab. A decision regarding that would be taken only after the uh, Akali Dal's core committee meeting and that's to be held on the March 22nd. But a confirmation coming, Lok Sabha elections for at least 13 states of Punjab that will take place on June 1st, right at the fag end of the seven phases. And it appears that the political landscape of Punjab at this point stirring once again with talks now of a possible realliance between the BJP and the Shiromani Akali Dal. Manjeet Segal joining us live for more on that. Manjeet, the Congress says that Akali Dal and the BJP's alliance is basically killing the credibility of Akali Dal in Punjab. But tell us more. What does the Akali Dal member, do, do the members really believe? Will they actually manage to pick up their vote share, which is almost nil right now in Punjab? 
Well, uh, Navila, as far as uh, Kali Dal's vote share is considered, was, uh, considered this was 18% during the past elections, but it's on a downward trend. As far as uh, the Bharatiya Janata Party's vote share is concerned, it is around 10%. So it has not gone beyond 10% during the past five years. The Sifologists believe that if these two parties join hands, they can uh, challenge their rivals like the Congress and, and the Amadi Party. But the big question is the seat sharing. Though they have resumed talks on the seat sharing, but earlier uh, these talks did not uh, materialize due to the seat sharing agreement as Akali Dal was not ready to give more than two seats to the Bharati Janata Party, which was demanding between five to seven seats. So, but this time as well, when the talks uh, have resumed and both the parties are coming closer, close, uh, hakti parleys are taking place, uh, the, the seat sharing issue will uh, again crop up. If the Akali Dal agrees uh, to give more seats to Bharati Janata Party, the BGP can go ahead with this, but all will depend on the outcome of uh, the core committee meeting so, so of Akali Dal. Manjit, the quick question, who has more leverage here in Punjab, the BJP or the Akali Dal? Well, uh, BJP leaders were the most who were sent feelers to the Surimani Akali Dal. Akali Dal was a bit, hesit a bit hesitant uh, due to, to the farmer reasons. How do you know yeah. this, that the farmers are on the roads? They blocked uh, the roads uh, on, on the Punjab and Haryana borders. So Akali Dal on these issues uh, uh, is not happy the way uh, these issues were addressed. Akali Dal says there were other issues as well like the release of the Sikh prisoners besides the uh, the legal framework to the MSP. So these were two prominent demands besides the seat sharing problem uh, raised by the Akali Dal. So uh, things remains to be seen what happened after 22nd of uh, the, the March when the, the, the core committee meeting is held and uh, the, both the parties will meet and then the decision will be taken by the Bharatiya okay. Janata Party High Committee. So in fact we have a confirmation of sorts uh, from the BJP as well as the Akali Dal on this re-alliance that they're looking at uh, forming right ahead of Lok Sabha in Punjab. Have a listen. The core committee is sitting in the core committee. Possible जो पॉल एलाइंस है वो हो सकता है किसी दूसरी पार्टी से खासकर भाजपा से उसकी घोषणा हो सकती है उस पर बातचीत हो सकती है नहीं जब भी इम्पोर्टेंट जो इश्यू होता है इलेक्शन चल रही है तो कोर कमेटी जब भी बैठती है तो सभी एंगल्स को देखती है जो पंजाब की मौजूदा स्थिति है जो देश की मौजूदा स्थिति है इलेक्शन की स्ट्रेटजी भी हमने बनानी है कि कब कंपेन किस तरीके से चलेगा कौन कौन कहाँ कहाँ ड्यूटियाँ देगा तो जब भी कोर कमेटी हाईएस्ट बॉडी है सारे चीजों के ऊपर ध्यान दिया जाए मतलब संभावना है नहीं संभावना तो जो है कुछ भी हो सकता है लेकिन जो कुछ होगा हम मीडिया को बताएंगे आज मेरे लिए ये कहना कि किसके साथ अलायस हो रहा है किसके साथ नहीं हो रहा ये थोड़ा मुश्किल है लेकिन जो भी होगा आपके सामने जो है डिसीजन देंगे आपको कन्वे करेंगे शुक्रिया सर आपने थैंक यू जी थैंक यू अगर ये अलायंस हो जाता है तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी को अपना माइक लगाने की प्रचार करने का मौका मिल जाएगा वरना लोग उनको गांव में नहीं जाने देंगे दूसरा आ, उनका ये कहना है कि अगर अकाली दल और बीजेपी का अलायंस होता है तो ये अकाली दल के लिए सुसाइडल होगा अकाली दल देखो हमारी जो गठजोड़ है अलायंस है वो तो नाइन्टी से है और हमारा पोलिटिकल कम है हमारा तो हिंदू सिख भाईचारे का ज़्यादा है उसी के तहत हम काम करते हैं हम कहते हैं कि पंजाब बॉर्डर स्टेट है सेंसिटिव स्टेट है और जहाँ जितना अच्छा भाईचारा रहेगा लोगों का उतना ही पंजाब उसमें प्रॉस्पर प्रॉस्पर करेगा सो so, ये क्या बात करते हैं आ, कि इनका ये होगा वो मैं तो यही सम कि अगर इनका अभी जैसे जी जा रहे हैं गठजोड़ तो इनका है कहने के लिए कि नहीं है पर जो अगर जाएँगे लोग मैं फिर कह रहा हूँ कि लोग बुद्धू बनने वाले नहीं हैं इस बार और वो इनको बहुत अच्छे से जवाब देंगे और जहाँ बीजेपी की बात है मोदी जी की बात बच्चा बच्चा कह रहे हैं हम हम जितने अच्छे काम हुए हैं सभी मोदी जी और सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट से partnership with multiple regional parties across India. Will that really bolster their numbers to achieve that 400 over number, char so par as they call it, that cry that's across echoing amongst the BJP cadre. We're going to wait and watch. Meanwhile, slipping into a short break, coming up on the other side, amid all that speculation over disappearance from public eye, a new video of Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, has now surfaced where she's walking out of a farm market in Windsor with her husband, Prince Williams. We're going to take you through all that controversy surrounding Kate Middleton's disappearance on the other side of a short break. Stay with us.
अलवेश यादव को कब गिरफ्तार किया गया क्या आरोप है देखिए यह अभियोग पंजीकृत था पंजीकृत अभियोग के क्रम में हमारे द्वारा एक सौ साठ सीआरपीसी के नोटिस के आधार पर बुलाया गया था विवेचना के दौरान यह आरोप प्रमाणित पाए जाने पर हमारे द्वारा माननीय न्यायालय के समक्ष प्रस्तुत किया जाए सर आगे की क्या प्रक्रिया होगी किस तरह से एक्शन होगा अब ये विवेचना के विषय विवेचनात्मक कार्य के दौरान जो भी साक्ष्य होंगे उसको संकलित किया जाए कितने घंटे अलवेश यादव से पूछताछ हुई लगभग सर तो ये आग, आगमन के पश्चात इनके द्वारा जो भी बताया गया था समय के हिसाब से फिर मान्य न्यायालय हो कर सकते Elections, the heartbeat of the world's largest democracy, covered by the political journalist with nearly four decades of experience. The man who understands the pulse of the nation. Join India's ultimate newsman. I will decode the complex political chess game that's at the heart of Indian democracy. Elections unlocked with Rajdeep Sardesai. Maximum analysis on the Maximum Channel. In politics, everyone has an opinion, but I have the data. Whose stock is rising? Whose graph is falling? Track India's political stock exchange. Unmatched, unmissable data analytics. The only show on News TV where numbers do the talking. India's most credible poll tracker, the political stock exchange, with Rahul Kamal only on India Today. Second Kate video emerges. Video sparks more conspiracy theories. Is this really Kate Middleton? Video recent or old? The Royal Kate Spiracies. All right, the Kate Spiracies are swirling yet again. This time, it's a new video of the Prince and Princess of Wales that has really sent social media on fire. The latest video clip shows William and Kate at a farm shop, but social media sleuths have been picking up flaws already. So is that woman in the video there really fake Kate or real Kate? Have a look. This 15-second video of Princess of Wales put out by TMZ is the first visual proof that seemingly shows that she is happy and healthy. The video taken at the Windsor Farm shop shows Kate and William walking together, carrying shopping bags, chatting and smiling. But instead of putting all conspiracy theories to rest, the video has triggered even bigger buzz online. Eagle-eyed viewers flagged up a number of issues. Many internet users say that this isn't Kate in the video, but a body double. Saying that her face looked very different from the last time she was snapped. Others have pointed out that there are Christmas decorations at the shop, suggesting that this isn't a recent video, but an old one, claiming Christmas decor at the wooden cabins is taken down by end of January. Some have said that the video looks too grainy in an era when every phone has a 4K or HD camera. The Princess of Wales has not been seen in public eye since she underwent an abdominal surgery on January 16th. Royal family sources say that Kate Middleton's first post-surgery appearance could be on the Easter Sunday, where she could participate in the traditional walk to the church. The world and the social media sleuths will be watching. Bureau Report, India Today.
All right, I'm going to cut across to our correspondent in London, Lovina Tandon. Lovina, thanks for joining us. What's the conspiracy around Kate Middleton? Is she all right? We know that she went through a health crisis and there was a lot of talk about her disappearing and staying away from public light for quite a while. Uh, of course, concerns being raised whether she's all right. And is that video that we see, the latest one, legit? Very hard to say. It's conspiracy again. The royal sources have not confirmed about the video anything at all. And uh, therefore, it is conspiracy rife, as you can see, until they come up and say that this is uh, Kate herself, which is quite unlikely. Uh, what is happening here really is that everyone is now rallying around the fact that everything should calm down. Kate has not, it's the longest she has been away from, a ro from royal du duties. That is why the speculation but one should calm down and let her recuperate. It has been a major operation. We don't know exactly what this operation is all about, but uh, it is being conjectured by the, the various people and experts here that possibly on St. George's Day, when the royal family rallies around uh, for the Easter Sunday, that's when she might walk and will will herself uh, confirm what has happened but as of now all around it's only conjecture and speculations and experts and those uh, of friends of the royal families are coming forward through twitter through various uh, radio and um, television channels to say that she's fine she's re recuperating and that's what she should be allowed to do considering she has three children to look after as well all right. Well, uh, we, we're really looking at uh, a conspiracy theory that Kate Middleton has disappeared. But how far is that true? We're going to take you through a little breakdown into this web of conspiracy around Kate Middleton. Uh, here's December 25th, 2023. The last public appearance of Kate was at a Christmas event. And post that, we haven't really seen her except for some fabricated pictures that surfaced. December 28, 2023, Kate admitted there were reports that she had an abdominal surgery and was discharged a month later, a month after that surgery. And then in uh, March 4th, 2024 this year, we saw an alleged photograph of Kate Middleton driving with her mum into the Windsor Castle. And that image that was released, again, raised a lot of questions whether that image itself uh, was real or was it fabricated. And here's the picture that really uh, blew the lid off this controversy here, where on March 10th, 2024, the palace released Kate's mother's, uh, mother's Day photograph of Kate and her three kids with the three royal kids, but later eventually found out that it was morphed. In fact, uh, the same time, Kate admitted that she edited Mother's Day photograph to look like this, to clearly show Kate Middleton hale and hearty. Then on 11th of March, 2024, Kate and William allegedly seen together in a car, again trying to rest speculation that she's disappeared or she's not doing okay. And then here you have it. The latest is this image that surfaced or the video that's coming from a farm market in uh, Windsor, uh, where Kate and William seem very happy and hail hearty walking out of that farm market. And now again, raising questions whether these are actually um, Kate Middleton and Prince William or is it their doppelgangers? Well, at the end of it, it's for the royal family to confirm how Kate is doing. But of course, speculations are rife. Now, before this video, uh, we know that there was a lot of talk around Kate Middleton's health itself. Uh, Lowena, would you be able to tell us what exactly is this abdominal surgery that she's gone through? And particularly about that photograph on Mother's Day where she was seen with her three kids. Kate admitted to have morphed the photograph. What was the purpose of it? Was there any justification? It is, I'm going to start from this. These days we are living in uh, the real versus real world. But it seems from that photograph um, that, and it's quite an ironical moment that the royals have been living for us in the real moment forever, because uh, it's the picture perfect family every time on every occasion that they have been releasing. And it's now been coming to light that not only this, but even on the 97th birthday of the queen, the picture that was released, which was taken by Kate. So Kate has been, a very keen photographer and she takes uh, all of these pictures uh, a lot of them say that that's to be that's because she wants to keep control of what goes out especially about the children so 
the 97th birthday picture of the Queen was also taken by Kate and that now uh, has been confirmed by Getty Images that it's been doctored to some extent. So this has been happening, the real to real perfection, uh, the strife for perfection by the royal family, it seems now, uh, to the extent that uh, some of the agencies in France have now declared that royal sources wouldn't be trust, uh, wouldn't be uh, categorized as trusted sources. So that's one part of the story where there is a constant pressure on the royal family, something that Diana herself had come forward and openly yeah. spoken about, and with Harry and Ma Meghan gone to the extent that they have, that there is a constant pressure to look picture perfect. And this whole concept of perfection that comes and the pressure that it brings along. So that could be one pressure that drives in uh, or must have driven Kate into doing this. Again, the CD are speculations. She herself came and had to apologize, uh, but did not actually release uh, a fresh picture. One must, uh, one must um, also note that. Yeah, so yeah. the pressure of constantly being perfect. Now, what is happening to our health? Your, uh, the answer to that question is, again, uh, we do not know that at this point in time, it's all conjectures and speculation that it is more than what meets the eye, which is usually often the case with the royals. And uh, they, uh, they take full control on what goes out and what picture uh, it is what they want to show the world that they will show the world yeah. but as of now uh, if i say anything about what's really happening there are various theories going around that they have some a uh, series of abdominal uh thing which, which she has been a part of her intestine has been taken off so it requires a long recuperation but it's unfair to speculate and conjecture at this point well, in time the fact the that she was confirmed. at the hospital for a month time. after that abdominal surgery raises a lot of questions on the severity of uh, the illness itself for for one whole month at the hospital but then again it could be the royal family not wanting to take any chances uh, but Lovina, thanks very much. Really appreciate your time for joining us on this. Now, before this video, it was an image posted by Kate herself that triggered a storm. A picture of the Princess of Wales with her three children for Mother's Day, as Lovina mentioned. That's what really blew up this controversy after Kate admitted that she had moffed the image. In fact, it was uh, several media outlets uh, that actually speculated that this picture was manipulated and moffed. Uh, in fact, uh, many netizens there came out to slam the royal family for, uh, for twe tweaking that image to make Kate Middleton look perfect in that picture. While in reality, her health, conditioning, her health condition itself has been worsening. That's what's reported. Let's have a listen. It was the image that royal watchers and the world had been waiting. Princess of Wales' first image since her abdominal surgery in January. The image taken by Prince William for Mother's Day showed Kate Middleton with her three children and had a message from her which said, and I quote, thank you for your kind wishes and continued support over the last two months. But the image has now sparked concerns of manipulation with at least four news agencies withdrawing the picture. Getty Images, AFP, Reuters and Associated Press have pulled the photo, noting an inconsistency in alignment of Princess Charlotte's left hand. Many have pointed out that Kate is not wearing her wedding ring. But it's the sweater sleeve of Princess Charlotte that has triggered a wave of reactions. Prince Louis's fingers also appear to be photoshopped. It may well have been that some editing was done on the original photo. But is the entire photo fake? Is the Princess of Wales more unwell than she appears in the image? As Kate's spiracies exploded, the Princess of Wales clarified, saying that she does experiment with editing photos. She also apologized for any confusion that the family photograph may have caused. Bureau Report, India Today. And as mentioned, Kate Middleton's last public appearance was last year around Christmas. In January this year, she underwent 
what the palace called a scheduled abdominal surgery. There were no images, though, of her coming out of the hospital. Her children didn't visit her during her stay in the hospital. And her absence since has fueled a lot many more rumors. Have a listen at all the Kate Spiracies doing the rounds. <laughs> This was Kate Middleton's last public appearance. This was Christmas 2023. Two months later, conspiracy theories about the Princess of Wales are exploding. Speculation started after Kate's surgery on January 16th and after she stayed in the hospital for two weeks. The Kensington Palace in a statement revealed that the Princess of Wales underwent a planned abdominal surgery and that it was successful. The absence of photographs capturing her departure from the hospital fueled the rumours. A Spanish journalist has now claimed that the Princess of Wales had undergone a hysterectomy or the removal of the uterus and that she had to be intubated in an induced coma. Kensington Palace was quick to dismiss these claims as ludicrous. It earlier emphasised that the princess was making good progress. Despite the palace's efforts to quash the rumours, the situation was further complicated when Prince William cancelled a significant appearance, citing a personal matter, without giving any more details. There are, however, other more imaginative theories about Kate Middleton's whereabouts. One internet user listed a secret baby with Harry, joining ISIS and growing out a hair colouring disaster as possible reasons for Kate's disappearance. Another mentioned a Brazilian butt lift as an outlandish conspiracy theory. From dark possibilities to bizarre memes, the uncertainty around Kate Middleton's condition continues. Bureau Report, India Today. All right, that's it for me here. Coming up on the other side of a short break. Well, here you have big Shakti showdown that escalates. BJP MP Ravi Shankar Prasad hits out at Rahul Gandhi over his Shakti remark. I'm going to take you through that last story on the other side. Stay with us. effectuate the order and to obviate any controversy in the future, we direct that the chairman and managing director of SBI shall file uh, an affidavit uh, on or before 5 p.m. on Wednesday, uh, date Daldo. Could we have one more day, one Thursday? Stating, yes, that's certainly. Uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday, uh, indicating that SBI has disclosed all details of the electoral bonds, which were in its possession and custody and that no details uh, have been withheld uh, from disclosure. That SBI is required to make uh, a complete disclosure of all details in its possession. Full we'll stop. This, we clarify, will include the, this uh, we shall, this we clarify, would comprehend the alphanumeric, alphanumeric uh, number of, and the serial number, if any, of the bonds which were purchased and redeemed.
All right, Rahul's Shakti Bab that now snowballs. BJP slamming Rahul Gandhi calls him a Chunavi Hindu. Ravi Shankar Prasad says, Rahul Gandhi, do you have the courage to speak in the same derogatory terms with regards to fundamental thought of any other religion? You become Chunavi Hindu as per your convenience. What is the meaning of this? What does Rahul Gandhi think of himself? Will he keep insulting Hindu religion like the way he does? These are words of Ravi Shankar Prasad calling Rahul Gandhi a Chunavi Hindu. Bases the comment that Rahul Gandhi made on Shakti, asking the people of India to fight against the Shakti called Prime Minister Modi. The Congress Party under Rahul Gandhi is no more the Congress Party imbued with the doctrine and ideals of Mahatma Gandhi. This is a Congress Party led by a divisive mind, Maoist thought an anti-Hindu thought. Mr. Rahul Gandhi is completely in the sway of these elements. Rahul Gandhi is in the sway of these Rahul Gandhi is the exact word I am quoting. Hindu dharma is a word of the Shakti. We are fighting with the Hindu dharma. We are fighting with Hindu dharma. Rahul Gandhi ji, aise apman janak shabdon ka prayog aap kisi anya aastha ke baare mein kar sakte hai? Aapke karne ki himmat hai? Aapko karne diya jayega? Mr. Rahul Gandhi, do you have the courage to speak in the same derogatory terms with regard to the fundamental principles of faith of other uh, religious thoughts or their gods. So you don't do this. You are calm, you are kindly, you will be very kind. So why do you do Hindu Aastha on the Aapman? Is there a new thing? You become a Hindu for the Suvidha. But in your mind, there is a Hindu Aastha on the Aapman. All right, that's it for me here. Up next, 6 p.m. Pride with Akshita Nanda Gopal. Prime Minister Modi's Mission South in Top Gear holds a mega road show in Tamil Nadu's Salem and Kerala's Palakkad. Prime Minister hitting out at the India Alliance calls the DMK and the Congress corrupt on that stage. A lot more on the other side. Stay tuned. Weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 33 and minimum 17 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 30 and minimum 24 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 36 and minimum 22 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 33 and minimum 22 degrees. Chennai, maximum 30 and minimum 25 degrees. Hyderabad, maximum 33 and minimum 23 degrees.
Elections, the heartbeat of the world's largest democracy. Covered by the political journalist with nearly four decades of experience. The man who understands the pulse of the nation. Join India's ultimate newsman. I will decode the complex political chess game that's at the heart of Indian democracy. Elections unlocked with Rajdeep Sardesai. Maximum analysis on the Maximum Channel. In politics, everyone has an opinion. But I have the data. Whose stock is rising? Whose graph is falling? Track India's political stock exchange. Unmatched, unmissable data analytics. The only show on News TV where numbers do the talking. India's most credible poll tracker. The political stock exchange. With Rahul Kamal, only on India Today. Mutual funds sahi hai. Good evening. You're watching 6 p.m. Prime here on India Today. I'm Akshita Nantakopal. We'll be getting you all the highlights over the next one hour of the big political stories of the day. Our focus particularly on the big battle for South India. The Prime Minister for the last five days has been putting all of his energy into campaigning in South India. It's officially come to an end today with a mega rally that he held in Salem of Tamil Nadu. But has this campaign really led to any sort of perks for the BJP? Will it transform Translate to votes and can the BJP actually better their performance in states like Tamil Nadu and Kerala where so far they've failed to do well at this point. Now the Prime Minister is counting on his campaign making all of the difference in these two states but it's not just in Tamil Nadu and Kerala that he's campaigned but also in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana and Karnataka. So over the next half hour I'm going to be talking about how the BJP is going all out in their campaign and in forming alliances because we've seen big developments on that front as well again in the state of Tamil Nadu. I'm Akshita Nanta Gopal and here's a look at all of the headlines. Shakti showdown snowballs. Prime Minister Modi accuses India block of maligning Shakti pays emotional tribute to Nari Shakti with a special welcome for 11 Shakti Ammas in Tamil Nadu Salem. Larger NDA rises ahead of Lok Sabha polls. Raj Thakri on the brink of a pact in Maharashtra after meeting with Amit Shah. PMK joins NDA in Tamil Nadu. Akali Dal and BJP to resume talks on March 22nd.